Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. He was wanted for killing six people. Tonight, new video shows the moment police cornered him in an Oak Park neighborhood. The future of marijuana in Clinton Township will be decided next week. It's a very hot topic. It's very controversial. It's, it kind of puts, it polarizes our community. And come Tuesday, voters will decide whether they want to grant up to 24 pot-based businesses in Clinton Township. The pro-marijuana side has spent a lot of money. On the other side, neighborhood activists believe the ballot proposal asks too much. Mar McDonald live in Clinton Township tonight. And Mara, the township voted to not opt in. That's right, Devin. Actually, the township has voted not once, but twice not to opt in on marijuana-related businesses. Then you had a group circulate petitions around here, and now... Here we are, it's on the ballot. We're upset, we are upset. Tony Penna has lived in Clinton Township for 40 years and he and his neighbors are mobilizing to kill a ballot prop that would have Clinton Township opt in on marijuana based business. There's absolutely no way, in my opinion, that the Clinton Township residents are going to allow 24, up to 24 of these marijuana businesses. Penna says the ask on this ballot proposal is way over the top. The way they've gone about it, um, how they're trying to confuse the, the voters. The Vote Yes campaign is being run by well-known Lansing strategist Steve Lindner. It's very misleading to say that there's going to be 24 separate and distinct locations. That's just not true. Uh, if you look around the state uh, at where these facilities are located, most of them are vertically integrated where a grow and a process and a dispensary are all in the same location. Linder says the city of Lansing has opted in on marijuana and has a similar amount of licenses. This has been uh, a very contentious fight. Uh, both sides have uh, really reached out to their supporters uh, and quite frankly this is going to uh, like every campaign it's going to uh, depend on whether or not we can get our folks to the polls. Back here live this is going to be a really interesting one to watch on Tuesday on one hand you have that passionate organized grassroots effort and then on the other hand you have a well-funded professional campaign that's being run out of Lansing. We're live in Clinton Township tonight. I'm Mara McDonald. Back to you. Yeah, we've seen a lot of communities opt out or in. This one is going to be really interesting to watch because of the way we got here. All right, Mara. Kim. Well, tonight, our first look at dramatic police dash cam video showing the intense moments before officers caught up to a serial murder suspect in Oak Park. Detroit police say Kenyell Brown was a suspect in six homicides in Metro Detroit and they'd been hunting him for weeks. 911 calls led police right to him. Oak Park police joined the hunt for Kenyell Brown after a call from Detroit police. Because we may have a wanted felon in your guys' area. He's wanted for like five homicides. Officers swarm the streets and surround this fenced in yard in Oak Park. Oh, there's a man in my backyard and I believe Oak Park told me he's just in the gate now. Dashcam video shows officers breaking through this white fence. Hey, one down, one down. On the other side, a wounded Brown from a self-inflicted gunshot wound to the head. First responders give him medical attention and rush him to Providence Hospital in Southfield, where he died days later. And Detroit police say Brown was working as a police informant in the days and weeks leading up to his arrest despite multiple probation violations. It is going to be an interesting uh, 48 hours here in Metro Detroit. It really is because Ben is tracking snow and strong winds before we make a run at what almost 60 degrees yeah. this weekend, Ben. I think some of us are going to touch it. Uh, we've been so good on the temperature front. This is going to come as a shock to folks. But yes, we are tracking the last of this rain and snow that's exiting the east side. It's coming back tomorrow. Notice as we get into the morning commute really overnight, we're going to have some scattered snow showers and then towards the drive tomorrow, there will be some uh, snow showers around. I don't think it's going to be a whole lot south of M59, but you get into the north zone and some of that is going to start to stack up even as it moves to the south towards lunch, one o'clock when everything starts to wrap up. So north of M59, maybe a half to one inch of accumulation, then the winds start to show up. This is as soon as the snow comes to an end. That's where we're going to see wind speed spike over 40 miles per hour in the afternoon on Friday. 
thank goodness those things start going down as we get into Friday night and Saturday morning because that's when we're looking at temperatures in the teens for overnight lows. We'll talk about that and that beautiful recovery for the weekend coming up, guys. Okay, Ben. A crash on Detroit's west side sends two cars off the road and into a home. It happened a short time ago at the intersection of Woodbine and Clarita. Police say a red car blew through the intersection and slammed into another car. That collision sent the at fault driver into a nearby house and the other car into a pole. Police say neither driver was seriously injured. Tomorrow kicks off the beginning of the end for Art Van Furniture. Furniture chain announcing today it is going to be closing all of its more than 200 stores across five states. 3,100 people expected to lose their jobs. Art Van was sold to a Boston based investment company back in 2017. Uh, Art Van says it's going out of business sale begins tomorrow. Lawmakers passed billions of dollars in emergency funding today in an effort to combat the coronavirus here in the United States as the number of confirmed cases and deaths continues to grow. In total, the $8.3 billion bill will go toward a vaccine, testing and treatment. It will also protect against price gouging. This comes as Washington State announced its 11th death today, bringing the U.S. total up to 12. The other death coming out of California and here in Michigan, no cases have been confirmed. Today, survivors of University of Michigan Dr. Robert Anderson are calling for the Attorney General's office to investigate how the university handled the sexual abuse claims against him. Standing together with their lawyers and survivors of Larry Nassar's abuse, three survivors say they will not stop fighting until they see justice done. They all say they were sexually assaulted by Dr. Anderson. I went to see him for a sore throat, and that's when the abuse started. Dr. Anderson told me that I was too nervous and that I could, should get used to this type of routine examination, especially if I was going to apply for a pilot position at a major airline. The Attorney General Dana Nessel responded by saying any investigation into alleged sexual assaults by the late doctor would require full cooperation by the University of Michigan and the costs would have to be covered by appropriated funds from the legislature. The former UAW president is now facing federal charges in the long-running UAW corruption probe. Gary Jones is accused of embezzlement, racketeering, and tax evasion. Prosecutors say Jones stole more than a million dollars in union funds. Court documents show the money was used for things such as golf, cigars, and clothes. Jones stepped down as UAW president back in November after federal agents raided his Canton Township home last summer. A Detroit man will spend at least the next seven years in prison for shooting at police outside the Roseville Home Depot. It was almost a year ago. Victor Oliver opened fire at officers in the parking lot of Home Depot at 13 Mile and Little Mac. No officers were hurt. Oliver was shot twice. He survived and was charged with attempted murder. Today, he was sentenced to seven to 25 years in prison. One day closer to the Michigan primary, one less candidate in the field. Senator Elizabeth Warren dropping out today, paving the way for a Joe Biden, Bernie Sanders showdown here in Michigan next week. Senator Sanders is going to be making three stops in Michigan over the next three days. That includes a rally tomorrow night at the TCF Center in downtown Detroit. He's also going to visit Ann Arbor on Sunday. That'll be 6 p.m. for a get out the vote rally at U of M. Joe Biden will be holding his own get out the vote rally. That'll be Monday in Detroit, though details of that event have yet to be announced. We'll keep you posted. Biden scored four key endorsements today with Governor Gretchen Whitmer and Congresswoman Alyssa Slotkin, Haley Stevens and Brenda Lawrence all announcing their support for the former vice president.